Welcome everyone to this special webcast with Dr. Pillai. Today's message is a gift directly from the Divine. It is the full message that Dr. Pillai received on the morning of May 18th, a revelatory message that he calls my ultimate teachings. Dr. Pillai went straight to his computer without even brushing his teeth and right in the middle of breakfast because he wanted to download this message for all of you. Enjoy the video, and after the video, I have exciting news about an unprecedented online global event on August 15th with Dr. Pillai called Manifesting in Microseconds with the Master. A few weeks ago, I announced to the people, I don't know who did I make the announcement to, I do remember that it was uh, announced uh, to the people who are on my light body program that these are the people who have been uh, studying with me on a committed basis for a few years. I may al also have mentioned it to uh, all the people who have been uh, following my teachings. Uh, but anyway, uh, what is this ultimate teaching? It's the term itself is on oxymoron. It is uh, a contradiction. There is nothing called ultimate. Everything changes. There cannot be any ultimate teaching. Everything is relative. It is changing. And this has become increasingly uh, my reality. And this is in accordance with what is happening in, in science. Ever since we got into quantum physics, our worldview has changed tremendously. And then uh, we have now begun to understand at least uh, people who are open and who are not clinging on to Newtonian and Einsteinian models uh, are understanding that uh, we need to change everything. We need to change our science and uh, understand uh, science in terms of, of religion, of uh, spirituality. I don't mean by religion the institutionalized religion, I mean by religion, the study of uh, spirituality, a higher, higher state of consciousness, because it's very important. We are at a uh, time period wherein we find that uh, we are gods. Our consciousness is God. And whatever we learn uh, in schools and colleges, about material science, they are not giving us the total reality. They are only giving us materialistic uh, version of reality. And this is very bad. And I know, I'm, and I understand as I speak to you that I am talking in terms that is way above the understanding of people. So I want to switch gears and then uh, talk in terms of trying to help people uh, who are not uh, sophisticated and want to understand about quantum physics or anything uh, or uh, the observer reality. Uh, so everybody, you know, everybody wants to be free of uh, suffering. So that is uh, very simple enough. Everybody want to be free of uh, pain. And the pain are of different kinds. You know, there is emotional pain, you know, there is uh, psychological pain, there is uh, physical pain. And we have been able to monitor it uh, and uh, also somewhat remedy situations when it is, uh, uh, when they are out of control. And uh, at least we can anesthetize ourselves. You know, machines are available like uh, for us to deal with pain. So fundamentally, so we, our problem is due to this body. That's why uh, my emphasis, 
has always been on turning the body into light, which seems to be a, um, a high ideal that it is out of reach because everybody is dying. And uh, there are not many people who have turned their body into light. So why are you, you know, talking about things that are impossible? It is not impossible. I'll tell you that we are moving at a mm, rocket speed. And even rocket speed is relatively uh, not uh, the highest speed. The highest speed uh, is even beyond the light. Now, they, they have found out that there are, you know, uh, phenomenon in the world that um, uh, that we cannot even measure the speed. Okay. We have to, light is not the ultimate speed. But even if we get to the uh, speed of light, that's pretty good itself. You know, and uh, so the so we have at a point in time uh, in a threshold of uh, transformation uh, that gives me a lot of hope for this world. Not that financial freedom is going to help us. Uh, it will help us as to give us a good house, car, and so forth, and medicine, buying medicine and things like that. But then we are unable to put a permanent uh, uh, end to suffering. Uh, we are distracting ourselves. We are playing games with the body, mind, and, and our own lifetime. So it is very important that uh, we understand what can be done and uh, everywhere, and that should be applicable to everyone. Now, as you know, I of late have been very much involved in science. But is science going to give us uh, freedom? Freedom from the body, freedom from the mind? No, not as it is now, unless the science evolves. Science has been evolving. One of the things that uh, people find it very difficult with me is that I come up with things, <coughs> uh, new things every moment, new in a relative sense. So it is impossible for me uh, to give permission for my staff, this is my ultimate teaching, just, you know, when they come and ask me, there's so much material. Uh, people are confused. <clears throat> and you are not even giving us permission to uh, put them into book forms and then market them properly. And I told them that, uh, you know, I am changing moment by moment. The new reality is that uh, what you understand in this moment, not what you said some time ago, not even yesterday, because it has moved so far. And then it is important for me to identify, if at all I identify uh, myself, to the knowledge or wisdom that I get at this moment. So what do you need to do? You have to let go of the past. Letting go of the past is very important. So what the problem is, we are completely, completely stuck in this materialistic model. Even a person like Einstein could not accept quantum physics. You know, he said that God does not play dice with the world. He said he does play the dice with the world. You know, everything is changing. And why do you want to get stuck in, in the classical physics? Now, I was just reflecting on it and then um, trying to find out if I am really uh, doing a good job with my own teaching. So this morning as I was, uh, as I was uh, lying down and meditating on it and then 
and I was thinking about the electron and then uh, there was a, a revelation that came to me that the electron is the goddess and the goddess is the activity principle as well, uh, as opposed to the static principle called the Shiva. Uh, the goddess is the source of all activities and then and the goddess is at a tremendous speed as in being the electron. So then I remember Heisenberg, uh, remember, you know, the theory of uncertainty and how you cannot locate uh, the particle. You know, there is only then Neil Bohr talking about um, the probability theory, then it's only, you can think in terms of only a probability. These are very important things. The matter doesn't exist. Only the probability of matter exists. But then we don't teach any of that in schools because they are very relevant for us. We uh, only teach about science in isolation without consciousness. So they go, oh, that is particle physics. What, is, what does it have to do with me? What is it going to do with electron to me? And uh, uh, how? what do I care about uh, Eisenberg or what I could about Neil Bohr, you need to because these people are saying that you uh, the, the moment is the real and then nothing is static, although it appears to be so. So this teaching has uh, been available uh, for quite many centuries, if not millenniums, from the ancient traditions because the ancient traditions have always said that. Uh, uh, the appearance is not the reality, which they call as Maya. So our identity is only with this hard reality of this blood and blood, uh, flesh and blood reality. And as long as we are uh, just focusing our attention only on this body, only on the DNA, even DNA is very gross. You know, we have to go deep into the uh, uh, composition of DNA into nitrogen, you know, carbon, and phosphate, and then and then when then when you have to go into the subatomic particles to see that. So we are boson particles at least you know we have come to a point to understand that boson is the god particle because that was what gave us uh, the uh, you know the material formation to some matter you know is the origin of matter is boson particle that is again it's not ultimate reality ultimate reality is beyond it now again I, I don't have to constantly check myself to come down to this uh, a plane of the mind plane, so that uh, which means the material plane is, is the motivating force uh, which, which we can relate ourselves to and then talk to people about, uh, you know, what benefits are there for me. So why, I'm, why I have to waste uh, my time uh, listening to this another philosophical uh, talk or uh, quantum physics is also now considered a philosophy by at least the materialistic uh, people, or even materialist scientists. But it is not. Now, the most important thing, yeah, I'm very, very practical. I'm telling you that, you know, uh, um, I'm, if this is not going to help us, uh, bottom line is I want to end human suffering. And we cannot end human suffering through our paradigms, through our economic paradigm, educational paradigm, medical paradigm, none of this is going to work. Then we are in a spiritual emergency. The emergency to understand the relationship between uh, matter and uh, and energy and how all those uh, Einstein said that they are convertible and then we are not living that. Now quantum physics has pushed this idea of matter and energy to a new dimension and the dimension is the observer reality the observer is important the observer decides uh, what 
the reality or material reality at the level of the particle is concerned. If you they think that the particle is going to uh, behave this way and uh, has these characteristics, then that is the reality. So this is very key to us for, to understand. So the observer is very, very important. Forget about whatever I have set up until now. Okay, just cut it off. That's what I am saying, that whatever we, you know, we think and say and do and everything, and in the past is, not, is no longer real. But if you really live in the truly, the true now, and that now gives you a newer understanding, and that new understanding becomes, uh, you know, outdated in the second and the second and the, and the following second. So things are, you know, and I am just using language, and that further limits me to uh, express everything, because if you become, if you go beyond the linguistic understanding, because now uh, Patricia called from the brains. Um, Brain Language Institute of uh, the University of Washington, Seattle. She says when a child is born, the child has all the ability to know all the languages. The infant has, you know, with the, you know, after when it gets older, like even within months, and it loses its ability. So omniscience, you know, this is a platonic concept. You know, you see Wordsworth talking about it and USB and censored for uh, talking about that uh, and then he even was losing his, uh, going to lose his poet laureate if that's our politics and the politics has not changed. So we got to change all these things. We know everything. We have to start uh, in the, you know, educating uh, the, the babies, you know, even in their fetal level. Because that's the time we have tremendous amount of understanding of how we are. And all that, uh, you know, is lost when we are born. And in the name of ignorance, we are promoting intelligence, including quantum physics is ignorance. The latest physics is important. Again, I have to correct myself and come down to this world and then say, you know, I'm not, uh, <clears throat> if I'm condemning, why am I using this, this is, or using science because I'm deeply into science and proving how the scientists uh, uh, are going to be of help to us because because we live in a world that there is more credibility for science than there rather than for physics rather than for philosophy that's why I'm more into into science I was at Harvard talking to uh, scientists who are interested in doing research with, uh, on the sounds and how they affect the brain and that is a very important thing. So, 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 again, to come down to the bottom level, uh, uh, and then uh, give you something that is very tangible for you to understand. Many years ago, uh, I was given a sound called Brzee uh, by a, a great uh, uh, rishi or a yogi uh, who was a king. And he was not satisfied with his uh, how, with his governance because in his country there was uh, there were poor people, there were rich people, there were medium class people, and then they were suffering. And then he wanted to at least take care of uh, the financial problem of the people. And then then he gave me uh, through uh, a special naughty reading um, uh, with. Uh, that uh, he was waiting for me for so long to give this sound, uh, Brzee, and then uh, this sound, Brzee, will uh, change the entire world as far as uh, its economy is concerned. Everybody will have money, and that will at least help the people who cannot go and uh, into self-inquiry or do anything. At least I will make sure that it uh, that people are fed and then they have the house and things like that. So that's that was very good. But 
did I follow that? And I was uh, very excited about it. And then <clears throat> my, even my name for the time was Bruzi because I was asked to get, have the name Bruzi. But I soon got, um, you know, uh, uh, not quite dissatisfied, but not uh, believing it enough. So I discontinued that. And then uh, although there have been uh, case histories of uh, uh, tremendous uh, success in the financial arena. <clears throat> but again, now, this is about 10 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago, I don't remember. This sound has been coming to me because the Nadis have been telling that the, all the problems will be solved by, from other sources, from, so, oh, so there is, there are, you know, truths that are available that uh, can, that have some more permanent values, more permanent values than others, and then, and that one, uh, uh, those categories are the sounds. So that's what uh, I, I have been talking to these neuroscientists now who want to go and do uh, fMRI uh, research while people are using the sound to see what parts of the brain are lighting up. This is again a uh, playing a game. Is this going to really give a permanent uh, solution? It 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 can give you know somewhat um, uh, a solution that uh, is not available anywhere. You know, for instance, the sound ah. Uh, when I gave it to Wayne Dyer, and he just did not, I, at that point, I did not know. And the sound again was given to me by a divine source. She said, hey, you know, at first I revealed the sound in a church. And um, because the pastor asked me, you know, why don't you kill these people who are suffering and why don't you give a sound uh, that will um, address their financial uh, problems. Then I gave the sound because that I was give, asked to give the sound from a divine source. So it did well, and then I, you know, I was intuitively catered to give it to Wayne Dyer, who will take it to the world, and he took it, and then made, a, and even created a CD, and then put it in a book called Manifest Your Destiny, and he has also revisited it now, in a recent book that he published on, I clearly see it now, and then he just talked about me. Now, my question is, uh, is it the ultimate teaching? It's not. The ultimate teaching is something that is going to change moment by moment by moment. And if you are at that level, you know, I have a body, and my 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 consciousness goes and identifies itself with the, with my hand and feet and my past and my present and all my commitments and those these things and if i remain committed to that <clears throat> then i cannot commit it to the bosonic reality that i am or even beyond the bosonic reality that i am so we have to see the limitation for instance <clears throat> the, it's not that uh, <clears throat> the dna <clears throat> Uh, although it was found only in 1953 by the, uh, James Watson in uh, 1953, I think, is the American biologist. Uh, although there has been some attempts by other people to photograph it, like Frankel and others. Um, <clears throat> is uh, the uh, DNA the ultimate thing? No, it is not. I, I mentioned that to you. So we are going, moving at a tremendous speed. Currently, my uh, research is on uh, the brain and how the sounds can change the brain and activate the brain. And one program that I'm, I'm somewhat satisfied and is the school program that I have been teaching all everywhere and I have tremendous amount of results coming from everywhere we teach this program how 
certain phonemes because my theory here is p equals uh, i uh, which is phoneme equals intelligence and how uh, a person uh, uh, intelligence can be changed you know intelligence is knowing as can be changed and then how uh, they, they, there are uh, certain phonemes that can go and activate certain uh, sounds again with the sounds my contemporary my knowledge today of the sound of for instance has changed over a period of time when the sound was given to me uh, uh, 15 years ago and not that there is a history of the sounds in other traditions I'm not going to go into that because then it will be a never-ending story um, when it was given to me in a church to be given to the people, that was a divine decision or knowledge came and then I just gave and then Wayne Dyer took it. And when even when Wayne Dyer's uh, presentation and then my understanding was uh, the sound will help uh, people to manifest whatever they want. But never did I talk about uh, how the sound R can go and... Uh, uh, create activities in the anterior cingulate, which was revealed only three, or four, three years ago in a study that was done in Brain Science International. They found, uh, you know, I, uh, um, I have a program with uh, Jay Gunkelman, the founder of Brain Science International, talking about the anterior cingulate. And uh, there is a story about the anterior cingulate. I have never heard of my anterior cingulate. I'm not surprised because I'm not a neuroscientist. Even if you're a neuroscientist, it's a small part of the brain and not, you know, not everybody is going to understand <clears throat> um, what, a neuro, uh, what an anterior cingulate is. The anterior cingulate is a very important part of the brain because it contains in a later on, the subsequent knowledge came, from, came to me about the one economy on neurons. And then the neurons are very important. They are found only in human beings. Uh, and that was now updated by people finding that it is also found in elephants and dolphins and monkeys. And, uh, but then, uh, and then they play a very vital role in making us to human beings in terms of intelligence, in terms of compassion. So uh, the our sound has uh, a relationship to this. So the divine knowledge came and then said, not about anterior cingulate, not about one economy on your arms, but about just use this brain, you know, and then uh, put it in the midbrain. And that's what uh, the teaching of the arm meditation is all about. So, do you think I'm satisfied with that? Uh, um, you know, finding out the one economy on your arms, or now even going into the uh, study of. Uh, the sounds impact uh, from the perspective of uh, the fMRI and then the scientist was telling me we are going to be loaded with data because fMRI will give us a lot of information. The real uh, task is going to be analyzing this and then uh, finding out okay so what's really happening now this is the problem analyzing the data and then interpreting the data when who is going to do that and that is uh, that is your consciousness the observer the scientist here is the observer and what is he going to base it on some kind of a logic other that he has acquired in his training so we are going to be conditioned regardless of what do we do. So are we going to give up then science and then go into the philosophy which says that be still and know that you are God. Okay, that's the Bible. Or the Buddha, stay in the nirvana, which is the death of the you know ego consciousness, death of the mind consciousness, and being in the void. And then if you are there, then you will understand everything that is, as that's all you need to do, then you don't need to do anything. So that is true, you know, the science is now ag agreeing on it, but uh, uh, are there, then what are we going to do with this uh, uh, dilemma that's given the fact that everything is, uh, is moving so fast, 
and then we never get uh, the ultimate truth. Uh, yes, that is the way it is. Until you yourself become boson or fermion or muton or leptons or even beyond all these things. So you become non-physical. So my own problem in teaching is that even when I am uh, very, I'm very satisfied and then fascinated by neuroscience, I spend a lot of time in a day uh, looking at uh, uh, peptides, amino acids, brain, and hypothalamus, and pituitary, and, and uh, uh, they are they are quite satisfying to me. But then comes as I am reading this uh, in one of my life. Uh, a lifetime, I was uh, a saint called Manika Vasagar, and then God came and told me, Shiva came and told me, hey, don't be a victim to knowledge. And knowledge is ignorance. And then it is so fulfilling and satisfying. And you will spend an entire lifetime in acquiring knowledge. And still you will not be finished and then you come back again and then finish it. Because I just remember what Einstein said when he was dying. And uh, he said, oh my God, I know a lot more than uh, what I did before. But then uh, I don't know enough math to put them into equations. You know, this is some of the last sayings of Einstein. So what is going to happen in Einstein's case is that he was so uh, uh, upset that he did not know enough math and then that he wanted uh, more math, he will be born as a mathematician and then will reveal more. So this is going on, this is, this is the re reincarnation uh, process. Whatever you are not able to accomplish in this lifetime, you come back and then do it, okay? And, and that is true in my case too, because many times I have asked, why did I came into this material plane? Everything is so slow, and there is so much suffering uh, outside, and then uh, personally and everywhere, there's, it's a mess. So what can you do? And then uh, why did I come when I, uh, you know, I came because it was one my, it was my observer's reality. I wanted to, Oh, well, like Einstein, I wanted to do something that uh, I did not know at the time because I have in many lifetimes turned the body into light. But what does that is a traditional method and it was useful uh, for me, but it wasn't useful for everyone else. So the my incarnation uh, was necessitated by uh, finding something that uh, uh, a path that is a method that is useful for everyone. So the what uh, that method can be, you know, it is science. For instance, I will say this. Uh, this is a, a wisdom from Osho, which he said when if Jesus was enlightened, or Buddha was enlightened, or Muhammad was enlightened, or anybody who got enlightenment, it was a personal experience for them. It was not useful. For so many others, uh, it's, uh, whereas, he said, like people like Edison found the light bulb. And it was useful for anyone and everyone, every human being. So that is the power of material sciences. So that exactly is what motivated me to come back to this earth plane. At a time then, I can talk in terms of uh, science and it can also uh, uh, take us through step by step into another reality. You know, instead of just one person sitting and meditating and liberating himself, turning his body into light or psychologically enlightened and then discards his body, that's another model. But science is here for us to or give us uh, a strong foothold, which is which is a great thing, because if there is pain, there are painkillers. If uh, you know, I have an uh, eyeglass, you know, the reading glass, and then then my sight uh, got bad, and then there is a bifocal um, lens that I am using, and now uh, that is good 
for sometimes you know i will tell you what i cried and cried and cried when i had to first uh, use my eye glass my god why are you putting me through this why do i need this glass and is this uh, you know by putting a glass can i really see you god i can see the letters and read because I, it was a reading glass and why are you keeping in this i was crying and then that was in a, uh, i wrote a poem because poetry uh, can reveal you uh, a greater truth that is also einstein's finding during uh, the last days of his life he was hanging out with poets and artists because he said that these guys can get something uh, very interesting you know because they are in touch with uh, the insight which is beyond reason because einstein himself many times said that all his discoveries came to him not through reasoning but through intuition so <clears throat> to go back again now no, i know i know that i'm going you know astray and then i want to come back man talk to you more um, about the practicality this the sound that i'm doing the phonemic intelligence soon it will be on the uh on the web because i i'm getting frustrated because it takes us some time for them to formulate for the, you know and then to put it on the website and people working on that but i i just want to move out who, who knows by the time that it uh, it becomes available i have moved and then there is another teaching see this is the reason why i tell people be in touch with me all the time because i change uh, my teaching all the time based on what comes to me you know and whatever comes to me is not through search i'll give you an example when i was uh, discussing this with the scientists 3 4 years ago 3 years ago about the anterior cingulate of the sound of etc and then uh, the scientist told me in the first session we prayed we prayed to my going to the camera <clears throat> i wanted to know about the anterior cingulate and uh, i mentioned that in that program called the mid midbrain medical uh, midbrain medical method you can have access to that all of you free on the uh, uh, on my youtube i think uh, i wanted to know about the anterior cingulate then i just go to google search that's why i said that google search paradigm is a wrong paradigm but that's the only paradigm we know not that i am putting down google without google we cannot live even the google as uh, kurzweil says is another brain we have a greater brain that can give you a lot of data so i went to google <clears throat> and then i was not searching things like other people would search because i searched from my intuition what do i want to know i want to know about the anterior cingulate and then there i was able to go instantaneously to a page where i got the information that there is a phd dissertation on anterior cingulate and then and then even that dissertation i am not going to read that because that's involves time because i want timeless knowledge that's 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 the most important thing for me okay I, i'm glad that uh, you know the divine is giving me this word timeless we don't want to bring time we don't want to bring time to make money we don't want to bring uh, time uh, create time to make uh, uh, to learn more things time is really the villain okay how can you stop time we if you vibrate with light as einstein said you can stop time so how to we how are we going to uh, um stop time i have taught these things in the previous light body program but they are again not this um, uh, kind of teaching i would do today or tomorrow so these are really uh, changing so fast that we can stop time and then get anything we want instantaneously and uh, and provided we are in that uh, bosonic state okay that's why i even created a mantra called om bo uh, there is a mantra on boson and in working boson that's also in the internet you know i am bosona something like 
to that uh, effect. <coughs> so when you are identified with boson, then you are in the primordial moment of understanding uh, energy uh, becoming matter. Okay. And then, and as you go deeper into oh, subtle forms, then then you understand things better. For instance, and then the power is also increasing tremendously because we are in a compound uh, body, you know, a uh, very gross body. And then the my, my, our brain, our mind and everything are like a very compound, complex matter. We like the compound things because we like the compounded interest rate. That's which we are stuck. But anyway, if you go to the element, you go to the molecule, you go to the atom, you go to the subatomic particle, where do you want to be in that scale? Do you want to be a compound or whether you want to be a boson particle? You know, the boson particle was articulated by Buddha in a different way. The Buddha said, no, don't stay with the, the thought surface consciousness, which is the thinking consciousness, but kill all those things, kill everything that is very superficial, and go and identify yourself with the void, with the nothingness, with the nirvana. That is bosonic state or pre-bosonic state. You know, in that state, you are everything. You are beyond language, beyond mind, and then and that can be done by everyone through, so, you know, through focusing their attention not on our ego or the mind or the senses and and making money and all these things. But, but if you can live these things together, you know, again here there is a problem. People come and ask, okay. If I'm thinking about boson from morning till evening, who is going to do my job? And now, I mean, who is going to pay my rent? That's a good question. That is where, you know, see, a solution was revealed uh, as a, to this problem as early as a million years ago uh, by uh, the Hindu uh, saints and yogis and rishis. And the latest one, which became popular, was uh, the Bhagavad Gita, where uh, Krishna, the God, is answering this question, which says, Yogastha Guru Karmani. Stay in yoga, stay in the nirvana, and you have to do yoga, which means you have to do karma, which means you do your uh, job, whatever it is, whether you are a bank officer or a or a teacher, or a, or a doctor, or an engineer, you got to do, because you cannot remain without doing. Is it karma jaya or karma without, you know, between action and inaction? Action is better. So that is a practical teaching, okay? So somewhat it can be, uh, somewhat only, it can be, you know, accepted. But then the real goal of everyone should be with, uh, with the changing, knowledge, because we don't have to go by any old scriptures. They revealed something that they knew. The Buddha did not know anything about uh, DNA or anything about antibiotics, okay, or uh, the modern uh, technologies that we have, airplane and, uh, you know, to move fast in space and so forth. We do not know. So, current day living then is we need to revise religion. We need to revise our uh, our sciences, and we have to keep doing all that. And this exactly is going to be uh, what I have just mentioned a few months, weeks ago, at least to the people that uh, have been studying with me. Ultimate teaching. So, what is the benefit? You want a new technology. That's what it matters, you know. We don't want an old technology. We still don't, you know. There was a time that when we were, uh, when we wanted a copy of the Bible, you had to wait for two years for somebody to copy the Bible, to give it to you by hand. You know, see how ridiculous that was, you know. And uh, now even bookstores are going out of business because we have an electronic media. We have a Kindle version of it of the books, that I can get any book that I want to pay if I'm willing to pay for it. 
then I can get a Kindle version immediately. But what I am saying is beyond what is uh, what you can acquire through hard learning. I began to understand about uh, Antarius Singlet instantaneously because I have the information here. I want to know the Antarius Singlet. Uh, then the answer came, here it is, go and get it. That is one level. That is not the ultimate level at all. Then, although I've been uh, talking about the anterior cingulate for quite some time, I never asked the question, what about the posterior cingulate? That can do you a better job. Oh, my God, how dumb I, I, I had been all these uh, couple of years. Then I began to understand. And I, when I asked a you neuroscientist, know, a friend of mine, oh, what is it? I don't know. We see we don't go, we are not academic people, you know, we are just, uh, uh, no, do research when you only to a certain area, not everything. So, we have the ability to get what we want because it is, uh, after all, consciousness that creates everything, is the observer reality. If we are able to completely remain as an observer, and fully conscious of uh, the ability to create everything that is somewhat acceptable to me at this level. So we have to be fundamentally observers. Observers means the creator also. So we can create everything that we want to create just by virtue of our own observer consciousness. Not a consciousness that is, you know, kind of um, this distract us through memory from the past and the senses which want pleasure and things like that. So we have to really control ourselves and stay in the observer consciousness and create wonders in this world. And that is the education that we want to have. So this becomes so, you know, when you go out into the world and this teaching is not acceptable. Do you think that the universities will teach it, the schools will teach it? No, we are far from that level. So I have to now, you know, find my, I have, I'm finding myself now, oh my God, it is so difficult to oh, introduce this anywhere. And then only very, very few people are able to uh, relate to it, even then they have to go to work for their jobs, and then once they are in the job, they can, the observer is gone, only the small eye of John working as a bank clerk is present, and uh, much training is needed. But I am not unhappy either, because we need even a science beyond this quantum physics, beyond this uh, uh, new theories, this, uh, the string theories, We're trying to understand that everything is a vibration. We are need to go beyond that. Where? We have to go to a, a technology that we have not yet figured out a science that we have not figured out. All these have to become go, go obsolete. The yogis somewhat understood it. They understood the brain in a totally different way. This will be some of the teachings that I will be doing in the ultimate uh, teaching program. They understood the, this came out of my uh, PhD also. There is a yogic brain or an astral brain or a subtle brain, just as there is, you know, visible compound reality that we see in the material reality. There is a reality that is invisible, like the, the particle reality. There is, they, they use the name like <clears throat> um, astral, subtle body reality. So, the subtle body reality means the subtle brain. For instance, the pineal gland uh, has been understood by the yogis as the third eye. Without surgery. They did not do any surgery. How did they find out that uh, the pineal looks like an eye with a retina and a cornea? 
How did they know? You don't have to do surgery to know that. That's an understanding we have. So they knew about the right brain, the left brain, the midbrain, and the occipital lobe, the parietal lobe, all these things they knew. And they related these parts to uh, sound waves, and, this, and then in the brains are connected to the chakra systems, and also there are beings in charge of them, they are invisible. So there is, the, the, the knowledge is growing, growing, growing now to integrate these things. And uh, uh, we are out there to be benefited by non-physical intelligence. We have to get out of this paradigm. And we are not there ready yet because some as soon as people talk about extraterrestrial beings coming and doing this, oh my God, this is this is not true. But what are the gods and goddesses? Then you have to discard the, even Jesus Christ when he said, <clears throat> when he was arrested by the Romans, he said, "Hey," uh, he said to Peter, "Put your sword down." If God had wanted, he would have sent an angel. And who is an angel? An alien. Maybe you don't want to use the word alien because it is charged with other meanings. It is a different being. It can do a lot of things. That's why people like, uh, you know, John Mack and Shirley MacLaine and other people who are working on this, they said that we can get benefit from these people, uh, from galaxies, from other, the, you know, from the outer sphere, you know, out in the space, they can come and teach us more. Because fundamentally what we need is a different paradigm, a different model. And that model is going to be what is going to help us. Because I want to help people and help myself as well, stuck in this body, instantaneously, not having to wait. And this is really the ultimate teaching. Again, as ultimate relatively. So I will have to revise whatever I have to said, and I have been doing that. That is why I am not marketable from the point of view of marketeers, because so many marketeers will come to the, you know, to my teachings and then uh, work with my staff. They say, no, no, we cannot work with him, because, you know, oh, you have to uphold whatever you have said in the past, and then otherwise you cannot, you you are you have you cannot moment of prior, uh, market a product to say this this product is no longer good because the moment has changed this is not going to work as good as what is going to be available now so these are all uh, you know problems they are really facing and uh, for me they are not the problem for me I have to speak the truth as I know now maybe whatever now I have spoken to you for an hour I believe, maybe. Then if I have to do it tomorrow, I will do it differently. There will be aspects that will be kept uh, intact, but then I would uh, change a lot. Now, as I am talking to you this, I just remember, why are we not able to access the science that we are going to have in 3000 in the now. Yes, it is possible. Because time is only up here. Time is not out there. And there is a relationship between time and knowledge. That's why the Buddha and the Jesus did not know about DNA or the boson or lepton or muon. 
they knew the language they they knew that's why modernization is very important so we know better than what the other people knew but then i'm not condemning any of them because they knew better than in a in certain other ways better uh, uh than we do because they had the spiritual knowledge they knew this about the spirit so in look at the jesus's life jesus was frustrated himself he said i have to get the holy ghost here and the holy ghost will help you to speak in in a language that is very different speaking in tongue you know in, in the pentecostal church the holy ghost will come and then will transform you so no language is required no knowledge is required things can happen this exactly was i was reflecting on and <clears throat> this morning how am i going to teach now then it came to me all teaching is foolish you just remain a witness to who you are which is omniscience omnipotence omnipresence and the moment you begin to know anything the moment you begin to use a language the moment you want to deliver it you are fake so that again so that everything you can do just by being here then why do you go to harvard and why go to other universities and then spread ignorance that's another conflict that i have all that i need to do is just stay where you are and do whatever you, you know don't do anything because doing is is going to lose your being because any becoming is bad that's what the scriptures have been saying all, all over the world so that my ultimate teaching then will also include not just verbalizing things but through non verbal means just observe and what comes from your mind and what comes from your soul and be conscious of the divine even the uh, einstein's uh, equation came from the divine moment which is you are that is the ultimate teaching the ultimate teaching is that you are god i thank god the divine then manifest in the manifest for giving me for using me as a tool to deliver this message to you god bless i trust you all feel empowered and energized with this special message from dr pilai on his ultimate teachings On August 15th, Dr. Pillai will be holding a live global online experiential event called Manifesting in Microseconds with a Master. We will be inviting people from all over the globe to join together in experiencing the ultimate power in a microsecond and shift human consciousness in a way that will optimize all of human evolution. So what does this mean practically for you and I? During this global event, we can begin to instantaneously resonate with money now relationship now health now dr pilai calls this process nowization and it will revolutionize everything beginning with you and people all over the world just click on the link below in order to find out more information about this upcoming event